After purchasing your morning coffee, which one do you choose to grab? This or this? Still, the majority of people still favor this. But in recent years, especially for online payments, digital wallets like Apple Pay, Google Pay, and PayPal have grown in popularity. The banks whose cards are in your real wallet are doing that. As Chase CEO, Jamie Dimon is worried about the development of new financial technology in 2021. Jamie Dimon remarked, "That should make us nervous. And one of the biggest dangers to large banks is Apple. These are some ways that the IT industry is encroaching on areas traditionally dominated by banks, and how those banks are preparing to fight back. Apple has developed a completely new method of payment that we call Apple Pay." Apple Pay wasn't the first digital wallet when it was unveiled in 2014, but it had a significant advantage over its rivals. 78% of iPhones in the US have Apple Pay turned on at this time. It's incredibly challenging to use a separate wallet if you want to use an iPhone in a store. Apple Pay was the only digital wallet that banks agreed to pay a charge for each transaction, similar to when you tap and pay at the register. The interchange fees that merchants pay to the bank that issued your card when you shop with it, which are typically 1 to 3% of your purchase when you use a credit card, are the reason why banks profit from debit and credit card purchases. Hence, if you spend $5 on that coffee and your credit card has an interchange fee of about 2%, the bank will receive about 10 cents. Instead of keeping 10 cents on the $5 transaction, the bank must instead pay 3 quarters of a penny to Apple if you use Apple Pay. Instead, the bank would keep a little more than 9 cents on a single tiny transaction, that might not seem like much, but it adds up. Last year, Apple Pay brought in an estimated $782 million for the company. At first, people thought that it would be preferable to support this and use Apple Pay for our credit and debit cards than to outright reject it. So what might happen if we don't play ball, you know? Might Apple create another card cutting mechanism? Only a small portion of the money that Apple makes through services like the App Store, Apple Music, and iCloud comes from Apple Pay. Nonetheless, that figure is rising. Between 2020 and 2022, it's predicted that Apple Pay's revenue nearly doubled. However, banks are losing more than simply money to Apple. It's acknowledgement of a name. The banks use as the underlying card for one of these third-party wallets is unacceptable. They worry that if you lose that complete experience, things will go downhill quickly until a digital company takes over as the lender and doesn't require you to work behind the scenes. And Apple has more goals for consumer payments than just Apple Pay. But, we hope to improve the Apple Pay experience even more. It collaborated with Goldman Sachs to develop the Apple Card in 2019, and in March it started to roll out its own purchase. Apple Finance LLC, a subsidiary of Apple, will serve as the lender for the Now Pay Later service, effectively replacing many banks and other financial institutions. Also, people are now accustomed to making payments through Apple. The idea that customers would be interested in working with Apple on a bank account or another kind of payment mechanism doesn't seem all that absurd. A representative for Apple declined to comment, although in recent years, banks have also made their own technological advancements. Many companies have introduced tap-to-pay cards that work similarly to your phone's technology and enable in-store checkout to be just as simple. This is a pretty clear illustration of how the banks have had enough and are attempting to come up with a very particular strategy to battle against Apple Pay and PayPal. They are now ready to compete with Apple in online payments as well with their own digital wallet called Pays. The company running the new wallet is owned by these seven large banks. Customers will be able to access approved debit and credit cards by entering their email address with payments, potentially accelerating the online checkout process. Yet, the banks won't be successful until customers utilize it and retailers agree to accept it. After all, banks have attempted to introduce their own digital wallets before. Chase discontinued its Chase Pay app in 2021, in part because to restrictions with the iPhone. People are very accustomed to paying using Apple Pay and PayPal, say those with knowledge of the situation. This practice is currently evolving. Many wallets have been introduced throughout the years in various forms, but they have all failed to take off as banks attempt to compete with their own digital wallets. Tech firms are attempting to develop apps for purposes other than payments. The conflict between banks and digital businesses will continue until a victor is found, that much is certain. Everyone is sure that a select few super applications would eventually rule consumer payments and financial services. So now they are essentially fighting it out to see who will win.